believe every day is purposeful. Every day has intention towards it. So whatever I'm called to do at this moment of service, that is purpose for me doing what feels good for me and that is when god is the happiest is when we are the happiest but why why is god concerned with us being happy because god made you you are an image of god you are little god honestly we got big g and you little g out here so what matters most is how you feel and we gotta make up our own rules to this game of life it's no right or wrong way to live this life all it is is like making sure you have peace of mind at the end of the day instead of trying to chase the rubies and the diamonds don't forget about your soul yeah so you also mentioned you also mentioned um about the book as well what's it called and then why did you write this book self-love manual it's also available now on amazon we were never taught how to love ourselves. We were never taught about the beauty of self, knowing self, loving self, and honoring thyself. So we have a manual for our refrigerator, a manual for our cars, but where the handbook at for self-love? So I decided and took initiative to just remind us of the superpower being that we are and we were created to be first we have to know who we are love ourselves before we even decide to entertain anything outside of us tara what does self-love look like and then how does it start self-love looks like how you are treating yourself every single day you teach people how you want to be treated by the way you treat yourself so if you are doing good for yourself, loving self, treating yourself good, making yourself look good, that's how people are going to come at you. They're going to come at you with the same energy you give yourself. So if you're giving yourself respect and high regard and standards and morals and values, that's how people are going to come with you. They're not going to come with you on no foolishness and on no games because you're not playing games with yourself. You're not wasting time with yourself. When you know your mission here in life, you don't waste no more time. You don't be out here kicking it and going to the club and just drinking for no reason. You be where you're supposed to be and you do what you're supposed to do because you know what you came here to do. It's like, do you feel like you know what you're here for? I'm figuring out every single day, but it's not a coincidence why we're here. It's not a coincidence that we are on this call right now. It's not a coincidence how life is going. So if we just consciously just make the right decisions for ourselves, by making the right decisions, you choose love for yourself every single day. Because if you don't choose love for yourself every day, you are disobeying yourself. So if you just make the conscious effort by doing what works best for you every day like today i'm going to go to the gym because guess what i love myself and i want to make sure self is physically fit so if you're gonna if you really honor self you're gonna make great decisions for yourself every single day so what did that process look for like what did that process look for look like for you and then how long did it take to understand like some of these things that we're talking about it is taking a while and it's still going to take a while because we have been taught by unconscious people to make us unconscious because most people are trapped in a rat race with themselves. They are living in hell instead of choosing heaven for themselves. But then once you just unlearn and understand what is seen as temporary and what is what is unseen is internal is internal and that is the truth so what we should be focusing on is the spirit and making sure your spirit is good not just how you physically look outside it's about getting this wholeness within your heart back intact so all we got to do is come here to remember who we are we don't need to pile up 
learning stuff from the school system we need to just draw out whatever is already inside of us already the love inside of us how do you choose to do that every day in your own life how do you choose to do that every day every day by first waking up and saying thank you god for another day thank you god another day and then i speak abundance over my life like money will attract me money will come to me and uh you know and then do that i speak over my life first and foremost and we can't be so addicted to social media and our phones like i'm learning to be like that's not gonna be the first thing i look at okay that's not about to be the first thing i look at it's about to be the first thing like thanking god and then by getting up and now like going outside in nature and reading a book like sitting it's getting colder but when it when it's summertime i'm in atlanta so the sun still be out and going outside just sitting on the grass and getting that melanin <laughs> getting the sun to hit this melanin to start off the day and then creating like then eating healthy like day by day i create a to-do list and i tackle what's on the to-do list and i don't put too much on my plate I live moment by moment, now by now, so I keep my to-do list short, small, and straight to the point, and whatever I don't finish, I'm going to do it tomorrow, but I finish for the most part, for sure, for sure. What made you this way? What has given you this confidence, and what has given you this self-awareness? So, I was so raised, I was so blessed to be raised by a two-family household, because my family my family has made me such an independent woman and that's a huge flex to be a self-sufficient human being that is relying on her own emotional needs she is supporting herself financially and she is actually getting herself physically right she is inspiring and motivating herself because she is independent and she has autonomy over her life like i think we all should have autonomy we all should govern ourselves we all should make independent decisions that works best for ourselves and my family instilled that in me on an early side because if our parents did not fulfill our needs did not meet our needs then we're gonna look for it in dysfunction and chaos because sometimes that's where a lot of people end up being codependent where they're needing other people to do stuff for them when you are your own savior so it started at home being raised with two beautiful black melanated beings that instilled values and morals and integrity and christ consciousness all up in me so it really started at home yeah well, what was your relationship with your dad like my relationship with my dad is amazing that is the number one man in my life and i feel like having a father figure really builds up confidence for women it makes you realize your worth now you're not gonna look for a daddy in these grown boys so having someone there that doesn't want you on a physical level that just wants to support you as the beautiful human divine being you are we need that in fathers like that is what builds women up and realize that she doesn't need anything from this outside world that can fill her up but her daddy gotta the daddy gotta um what are, what are some of your favorite memories with you know dad growing up wow i be so present in the moment but i i have all good memories with my father my dad was such a great provider fed us kept us clothes kept us shopping with the flyest stuff every school year from vacations to disneyland so all those memories that we got to experience from going on cruise ships to disneyland to traveling the world to doing train rides to plane rides all of it my daddy took care of me and i'm just so blessed were you the, like the only child or do you have siblings? Yes, I have siblings. I am the middle child and I am the black sheep of the family. I am the black sheep. Uh, that, that makes two of us. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Do you have any 
Yeah. So um, let's talk more about your podcast and your book, right? At what point in time did you put that together? And then, or some of your earlier thoughts, like when you thought about putting it together? Self Love Manual was birthed during quarantine. So while everybody was scared, we was out here getting busy. We was putting in that work. It was no reason to make any excuses. Quarantine was called for us to all go within and to all look within. So that is when Self Love Manual was birthed and cultivated and created. And also Take the Lead Podcast was birthed in 2018 as well. So having these thoughts and actually just executing, like I was urged to do it. Like I was, first I was ignoring them and then I had to get bumped. I had to get tapped on the head. I had to get shook to start doing this stuff because procrastination is the worst. We have to stop procrastinating, man. And that's all I sometimes tend to do. Be like, oh, I'm going to do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. But no, like start by just writing one page a day. Start by recording like one episode today. Then tomorrow, edit the episode. Like you don't got to do so much all at once. Like slow down, take a breather. But just as long as you're making steps towards it, baby steps are still the win. What's one piece of advice you would give someone based off of your book, for instance, uh, on uh, what to do about self-love? What to do about self-love? We got a very negative way of thinking about being with yourself. So instead of viewing being with yourself as lonely, you need to change it to solitude. Why in the world are you bored with yourself? That is a red flag. You get things done when you're with yourself. So you have to embrace the solitude. Misery loves company. Your company is going to throw you down a ditch if you keep following the crowd. And if you want to be a leader, you have to separate yourself. You have to think differently. You have to be differently. And when you are called to be different, that means you have to sacrifice. That means you have to have discipline. And that means you have to have integrity, morals, and values about yourself. You mentioned a lot of keywords that uh, obviously, like, this has taken you some time to get to this point, right? But what was the moment that changed everything for you? The moment that changed everything is truly relocating to Atlanta, Georgia. That like set a fire up because I moved here solo dolo, not knowing anybody. And I had to go get it. I had to get in the mud. I had to work jobs I didn't want to work. I had to show up for myself i had to really bet on myself and now that i bet it on myself it's nothing i can't do you just got to trust that you can do whatever you put your heart your mind and your body in so you move from where to atlanta i'm originally from cleveland ohio yeah and then um so what did moving to atlanta feel like it felt like I am surrounded by family. I'm surrounded by black love, black excellence. It actually like made me more black, honestly. <laughs> it made me like just appreciate my heritage and where I'm from and embracing the unknown about this journey, embracing who I am. I ended up locking my hair. Like that's also the best decision I ever made is locking my hair because us as women we spend so much time energy and money doing our hair and who we trying to impress i don't even know because natural is the best way to be and it has showed me the beauty in me why did you even take that decision in the first place to lock my hair yeah to save time, to save energy, and to save money. I didn't want to constantly do my hair. I didn't want to wear wigs. 
I didn't want to do a whole bunch of twist outs. I just wanted to get up and go because I'm actually like I have things I got to accomplish, things I got to do, things I got to create. And just like I think Steve Jobs or whoever, one of them, they only they wear the same black shirt every day. Like when you when you building an empire, you're not thinking about pointless decisions like what I got to eat today, what I got to wear today, how I got to do my hair. We building. <laughs> we are building. Steve Jobs, you're right. Um, well, you, when you say you're building, what are, what are, what are we exactly building here? We, what are we doing it for? We doing it for God and we doing it for ourselves. We are actually building an empire that we were here. Best believe you're going to know Tara Chantel was here from the books, from the movies, from the podcast, from the scripts from the relationships that I have cultivated, just know I was here. I'm gonna leave a mark. Brother, it's whatever type of mark is going to leave. I'm going to have articles written. I'm gonna have my name plastered. I'm gonna be in books. Like, I'm just gonna be here. And people gonna know, like, how how back in the day we scribbled at the in the bathroom, Tara was here. That's how the world just gonna know I was here. So, so what, what's the legacy you're trying to create? For, um, what's the market or dance that you're trying to leave out in the world? What I want people to remember is that I provoked thought. I challenged society. I made you think bigger than what the limitations that were put on you caused other people to evolve and elevate because I simply elevated myself. And all I did was just inspire you to be the best version of yourself because I was the best version of myself. Whatever type of woman you want to be without anyone by your side, without anything that putting labels on you to be as a woman, I wanna show what true divine feminine energy as a woman looks like without any labels that were placed on her, without any expectations. Moving forward, what are some practical steps or what are some practical ways that you can um, augment what you're doing now? Practical steps is knowing your mission. Because if you know your mission, you are not going to waste time. You are not going to be places that you know you shouldn't be. And you are going to start listening to your intuition. And once you just listen to that small whisper, it's going to get louder and louder when you develop an intimate, stronger relationship with God and yourself. And now you can hear more clearly. But if you are continuing to like shut down and close your third eye, God will whisper to you. God will tell you things in other ways to get your attention. But, A, don't ignore the tap. Don't wait until you at your back's end and you're out here lost, confused, and struggling. Like, God is trying to get your attention before the shambles is happening. So, trust that. Believe that and take initiative by choosing yourself every single day. What's the most difficult decision you've had to make? The most difficult decision I had to make is by choosing to be alone. Choosing to not be in a relationship, choosing to be in a relationship with myself, being loyal to myself, being solely dedicated and devoted and honoring myself because that is just embodying God and being the expression of God by choosing to do that. It's by doing self-development and doing the inner work. This is some hard work out here. Like I'm looking in the mirror facing demons every single day because I'm choosing to do that work, putting that work for myself not looking outside. I'm doing the internal work and I'm shutting layers. I'm shutting down. I'm diminishing all the labels that were told that I should be this and I should do this. And I'm unlocking the code to the matrix every single day because the most hardest decision is choosing to be alone.
Why is that difficult, by the way? We have a herd mentality. So the herd follows the pack. We feel like we're more acceptable by society by following social norms. If you want to be someone who don't follow the norms, they're going to make fun of you and they're going to call you this and that. And especially being a woman with my caliber, people expect me to be a certain way. People expect me to be in a relationship. People expect me to do this and do that and i'm shutting it all down and i'm telling you i don't want none of that i don't want none of that i don't want none of that i don't want none of it i just want me i should be okay with me but society like hold up nah you gotta be with somebody you gotta be somebody's help me you gotta do this for somebody i don't want it and I had to be like, it's okay. Like, it's okay, Terry. You are making the right decision. Even if society don't understand it, you understand it. You waking up happy every day. And that's all that matters. That's really what matters. Like, if you're happy and you, you understand what you're doing, that's it. No questions asked. What's one piece of advice you give to yourself? Sus, what I want to tell you to my younger self is keep your body to yourself. Nobody deserves all of this that you got going on. They don't deserve your hips. They don't deserve your curves. You don't have to do nothing you don't want to do just because someone says that you should do this because they put a label on it don't mean that you have to conform to society. What is so important is protecting your temple. Protect your temple by all costs. By protecting your temple, you're going to have a peace of mind. You are going to enjoy and embrace life. And you're also going to protect your heart and you're going to guard your mind. No one deserves to have all of you, access to you, and not even your heart. And by not giving your heart away, because I know this is what society has been giving us fantasies. Like, oh, you got to give them your heart. No, baby, no. You can love people without giving them your heart. You can love people without giving them your peace of mind. You can love people without being in toxic relationships. You can still love them, but you first have to love yourself. You first have to embody love for self because now you are going to be dripping sauce all down everybody and they're just going to be licking it from the floor. You don't have to do anything else but just walk in your divinity and know that you don't have to do much but be. All you got to do is be, baby. God has played such a huge role in my life. God gives me all the pleasure that I need. God has provided all of my needs. God has showed me what true love is. God makes me realize that ecstasy feeling that we are all seeking for, that we are all searching for is all within. We don't have to do much. We don't have to go out here like chasing after money and doing all this stuff. All we have to do is simply like, be and trust and speak like if we knew the powers that we have like all we got to do is speak and believe and trust like god you really got this awesome you got this and that's how god moved god got this god will do the impossible while humans can barely do the possible so trust that god will provide but all you got to do is just believe just believe and it starts with believing in yourself. You really sound like an old, old spiritual teacher right now. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's, I, I have I'm I have an old soul in a young body. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but what does that come from? Like, uh, is it from experience? Did, did you read about this? Is it something like someone had to teach you? Like, how did you know all this? We've been here before. I've been here before. We all been here before. And that's why this is this is going to be my last time here. I'm going to get it right this time. I'm going to get it right this time. <laughs> I'm not coming back. I'm not coming back. <laughs> but no, for real though, we, we definitely still like listen to other like spiritual teachers like Ayanla. She be getting me right. Like all of these teachers, like 
following Jesus Christ and realizing, okay, I want to be Christ consciousness. I'm like, okay, I I listen to Mother Teresa. Like, I want to be Mother Terra. Like, that's I want y'all to call me Mother Terra. So we listen to other great, beautiful people that came before us in it's not a coincidence that we hear again because it's like everything is just like an aha moment or like deja vu like yo i'm hey that's all that's all i know i'm gonna get it right this time okay <laughs> yeah so what, what you think you we've been here before can you clearly explain what you mean so as you pointed out that i have an old soul so knowing that I have an old soul, it's by you just have common sense. You have wisdom. Wisdom is more depth than knowledge. Wisdom is practical. Wisdom is common sense. Wisdom is experience. Wisdom is the unseen and that is the spiritual. So that's all we just trust our wisdom. We trust that these answers that we do have because we don't got all of them but the best answer is that we know ourselves so how can we ever do wrong we're not gonna know everything like i'm not gonna know about things i'm not interested in and stocks and all that stuff that's not what i'm interested in i don't care nothing about that but i all i care about is who i am as a person and what am i showing to the world as a person if there's like one central theme or message that you want people to remember you by what would it be love yourself baby like i want you to know me as dang tara really loved herself like she wasn't playing about no self-love like i want you to remember me as tara reminded me that i should choose me that I should love me, that I should honor me, I should bet on me, I should invest in me. I should really listen to me. I don't need to find love outside because I got it all in here. Everything else is just icing on the cake, but I'm the whole cake, golly. That's what I want you to remember, that I just want you to remember that you are your best version of yourself. I want you to remember your best version of yourself when you think of me. Like, I helped play a little piece of that to just get you to snap out of whatever hypnotation, fantasy story that was trained in you to just unlock another dimension to this reality to create a reality choosing yourself this time around. Yeah. And also, why, why is self-love so important? Because how in the world we going to love anybody else if we don't love ourselves? Everybody else is just a mirror of ourselves. So they are going to show you what type of love you're giving yourself. That's all they are. That's all people are because everything is really an illusion. Because what really matters is who you are. You came in this world alone and you're going to go alone. I know they're not telling us that, but we came in here having our own movie. We came in here being able to write our own script and you can cast people in and out your life if they not operating the way you know they should be operating because this life is about you. It's not about anybody else. Why are you making people the lead star in your movie? They are supporting characters in your movie. You are the lead star in your movie. Don't ever give nobody your part. Do not give anybody your power. This is your life. Everybody is secondary to you. <laughs> wow. Uh, I definitely felt that. Wow. That was deep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, like, but we've been... I feel like I'll push back a bit and say sometimes like we grew up conditioned to believe that you know like um uh, so I, I I don't know how to define it but it's we, okay yeah I I would say we grew up believing that love is conditional right so what that means and what that looks like is 
you do something for me, and then I give you love in return. Literally. Like, um. So how how do we break out of that awareness and like, how do we deal with the world differently? Hmm. Ah, oh, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. God can only give us unconditional love. God can only give us con- unconditional love because we should have boundaries and we should have morals and we should be able to say no. If this person hit me, best believe I'm walking away. I'm not I don't have the capacity to give you unconditional love. So we should embrace that. Only God can truly give us unconditional love cuz God will forgive us over and over again for the mess that we create. But we have to start with releasing expectations from people, expecting them to do things for us, to scratch our back and provide that for ourselves. We have to provide emotional needs for ourselves. We have to have this autonomy over our life instead of expecting people to do things for us because we're going to lead into disappointment. And then we have to stop having ownership and control over another soul they can do whatever they want to do let them do them they live in their life they live in what they mission here and what they need to learn you can't be the babysitter you can't be everybody's mama and you can't try to tell people what to do with their life you don't know what they came here to learn and we have to know as well nobody is made for you that's what Disney told us like we are finding someone who is made for us. Nobody is made for you. You are made for yourself. So once you understand that you are made for yourself, now you can connect with other souls on this journey because you connected with your soul. So now all you're going to do is be supportive to souls supportive to people and now you give them the freedom you give them the willingness to be able to be free fly bird fly whatever you just want them to be the best version of themselves because you are being the best version of yourself you are worried about you and all you there is going to support them for being the best version of themselves but we are here to just support each other and just to experience each other we're not here to control manipulate tell people what to do don't tell me what to do <laughs> a, a place of a wealth of knowledge and a wealth of information right um what resources would you recommend for uh, people who are just starting out on their um, self-love journey? So I would definitely recommend self-love manual, of course. You know, got to plug that in. But I also yeah, yeah. would mention as well, like, listen to audio books. Like, listen to Take the Lead podcast. Listen to your podcast. Listen to podcasts that is dropping gems every single day. Turn off the reality shows. Turn off the secular music that is promoting you to stay in a low frequency. And go within, baby. Read a book. Pick up a book. It's got some gems in there. Take a course. Learn a skill. But also study yourself. And not from astrology and numerology learning your life path number learning the meaning of your name learning the meaning of the time and date that you were born because that's gonna add a lot of things up for you now that's gonna add it up too if you got any like questions or concerns like man i'm trying to figure it out start there so what 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 do you know for sure that you know is true (laughs) what i know for sure that I know that is true. Peace of mind wins. Peace of mind over everything. If you don't have peace, you don't have nothing. Focus on the unseen. Focus on getting your spirit into alignment. Focus on being happy every single day. What I know for sure is being happy is normal being joyful is normal why tell me 
me why society and like people would always question me. Why are you always smiling? Why are you always happy? They have gotten us as zombies. They have gotten us accustomed to being depressed. That's not normal to be upset. You are upset because you are not living in the truth of now. What is for certain is this moment right now, and that's all that matters. <laughs> you, you hit me with it so many times that I always forget my, my next question. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you. How do you honor your struggle? How do you honor your difficult times if you do experience any? Yes, yes. You know, day by day, by simply embracing the unknown. When I tell you, I don't even know the future. Like, people be like, so Tara, what's the plan? I don't know. I'm letting God use me. But I'm just showing up every day. All I got is this moment right now. Of course, I have like a list of things that I feel as though that I want to accomplish. And they will get done. But I don't put a time limit. I don't add pressure on my life. So I choose to have fun. And by having fun is being responsible, is being disciplined, but being childlike and having this childlike faith because kids be having the most fun. No wonder why Michael Jackson wanted to hang with all the kids because kids be having the most fun. Grownups, adults is truly like Debbie Downers. They like big mad. They big mad. So having that childlike faith will like make you have fun and like trust god again and you, you speak a lot about being with yourself yeah. right yeah so it, it, at this point in your life right would you say like you're pushing yourself out there are you looking to date are you looking to you know find love if you do if you're looking what would that look like i am not looking i've it's nothing to look for when it's within. I feel like my focus in life is to myself, is to be dedicated to myself when, this is what women really should do. They should take the time to learn about them and get their mission complete and get their purpose complete instead of thinking like you have to find somebody and then get on your mission. So I'm on my mission and I'm on my purpose. So now I'm like lasered in and focused. Like I'm not trying to fall in love. I'm not trying to trip and bump my head in love. I'm intentionally moving on purpose with love and leading with love. So love is all around me. I don't need it from just one person to just give it to me because I give it to myself I show up for myself and I show love to myself every day so it's beautiful just having great like-minded people in my life but I don't necessarily need like romantic love you know a thug need love but first it really is with yourself and everything else is just like it, it really is just extra for me how, how would you define love what's your definition for in your own words what's your definition for love Mm. love is god love is embodying self love is honoring self love is supporting transcending and being in alignment of the highest version of yourself because that is how you're going to be there for other people we have to take initiative to first pour, 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 marinate, massage, whip it all up into self because you're just obeying God because God is self, God is love, and God is within us all. Because really what we came here to do is just really cultivate more and more into ourselves to just manifest whatever desires and make it into reality in this physical form because this is just a soup that I'm in. I got a spirit. I got a spirit. This is just, I'm so blessed to have this temple and this suit and this avatar. So I'm going to do a lot with it, especially how good, I, you know, God got me looking. So, but I'm going to do it in a good way. I'm going to do it in a good way. I'm going to use my powers to give the love for self because now I'm going, that's just, that's just the overflowing and don't be ashamed. Like let people have your leftovers. 
but don't but first you have to eat for yourself like first you have to pour into your first self first you have to fill up your own tank don't rely on anybody to fill you up because you're gonna be disappointed Going over way too close. <laughs> <laughs> Thing you want to say in closing? Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you so much for allowing me to share my thoughts, share myself, and just to be myself. Um, I I realized that the true power that we have is just being our most authentic self and. And if you understand me and you feel me, I love you for that. So thank you.